how to get ChatGPT and other LLMs to give you the perfect responses by mastering prompt engineering strategies. Anya Kubo is one of our most popular instructors, and in this course, she will teach you the latest techniques to maximize your productivity with large language models. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this course on prompt engineering. My name is Anya Kubo, and I'm a software developer as well as course creator here on FreeCodeCamp, as well as on my own channel. This is going to be a unique course for me as there is going to be a lot less coding going on, but a lot more understanding about the topic of prompt engineering and why some companies are paying up to 335,000 US dollars a year, according to Bloomberg, for people in this profession. And no, no coding background is necessarily required. So what are we waiting for? Let's do it. In this course, we will learn what prompt engineering is exactly, get a brief introduction to AI, a look at large language models or LLMs such as ChatGPT, a look at text to image models such as Midjourney, a look at emerging models, this would include text to speech, text to audio or speech to text, as well as prompt engineering mindset, best practices, zero shot prompting, few shot prompting, chain of thought, AI hallucinations, Vexter's text embeddings, and also end with a For this example, I'm going to be using chat GPT's GPT-4 model. So let's start with the basics. If you were to type correct my paragraph and then pasted a badly written paragraph, so just like this, today was great in the world for me, I went to a Disneyland with my mom, it could have been better though if it wasn't raining. Great. The young English learner has a better sentence, but it kind of stops there and the learner is just left to their own devices. And honestly, the sentence really isn't that great anyway. What if the learner could get the best sentences possible from a teacher who understands their interests to keep them engaged? With the correct prompts, we can actually create that with AI. So let's give it a go and let's write a prompt to do this. So here's the prompt I'm going to give it. I'm going to write, I want you to act as a spoken English teacher. I will speak to you in English and you'll reply to me in English to practice my spoken English. I want you to keep my reply neat, limiting the reply to 100 words. I also want you to strictly correct my grammar mistakes and typos. And I want you to ask me a question in your reply. Now, let's start practicing. You could ask me a question first. Remember, I want you to strictly correct my grammar mistakes and typos. So there's my prompt. You can also go a step further and ask it to correct your factual errors too, which I think would be an excellent addition to the prompt that will benefit the young learner. Okay, so let's go ahead and add that to the prompt. Okay, and let us do its thing. And great, so now this is way more interactive. As you will see, it's asking you a question and telling you what to do and will provide you with corrections if needed. So in a way, you're communicating with the AI, it's giving you suggestions and you're learning along the way. It's a completely different experience thanks to the prompt that we wrote. So please go ahead and click on here and that will take you to the platform. And then I'm just going to go ahead and switch to the GPT-4 model, which is the latest one. Okay, so great. You will see here all the previous chats that I've had. I'm just going to minimize this. And if we want to create a new chat, all we'd have to do is click the new chat button. Okay, so here, for example, what I can do is just go ahead and ask any questions. So what is four plus four and then hit send and that will essentially give me a response. So I'm now interacting with chat GPT four. On this occasion, I can actually build on the previous conversation. So what I can do is say, great. Now, can you add another five to that what is the answer and it will take into account everything that i have previously okay i am building on top of the knowledge that it already has great so again this is just a very quick introduction to how to use this we will be doing a deeper dive into this throughout this course to it I imagine a lot of people think it's just about constructing a one-off sentence such as correct my paragraph that we saw in the previous example. 
When you start to look at it, creating effective prompts relies on a bunch of different factors. Here are some things to consider when writing a good prompt. Consider writing clear instructions with details in your query. Consider adopting a persona, as well as specifying the format using iterative prompting, meaning if you have a multi-part question or if the first response wasn't sufficient, you can continue by asking follow-up questions or asking the model to elaborate and avoid leading the answer. Try not to make your prompt so leading that it inadvertently tells the model what answer you're expecting. This might bias the response unduly. And finally, limit the scope for long topics. If you're asking about a broad topic, it's helpful to break it down or limit the scope to get a more focused answer. Let's look at some of these now. In order to write clearer instructions, we can adopt writing more details in our queries. And to get the best results, don't assume the AI knows what you are talking about. Writing something like, when is the election, implies that you are expecting the AI to know what election you are talking about and what country you mean. This may result in you asking a few follow-up questions to finally get the result you want, resulting in time loss and, frankly, perhaps some frustration. Consider taking the time to write a prompt with clear instructions. So, for example, instead of writing, when is the election, you could write, when is the next presidential election for Poland? So let's go ahead and run this. And this will be much more precise and knows exactly what we are asking about. It's not going to go guessing and waste our time as well as waste our resources. So in other words, tokens that we are using. So in other words, money in order to get the right answer the first time. Here are some other examples of how you could write clearer prompts. So for example, we have this prompt here, which says write code to filter out the ages from data. And if you run it, you don't really know what language it's going to come back with. Let's see. So for example, here it's using Python. I actually didn't want to use Python. Okay. So now we've lost some tokens asking this. We've also lost some time and we just haven't got the right response. This could have been so easily avoided. So I'm going to stop this from generating and let's try again. So this time, let's be more specific by writing Write a JavaScript function that will take an array of objects and filter out the value of age property and put them in a new array. Please explain what each code snippet does. In this example, I am not assuming the AI knows what computer language I like to use and I am being more specific about what my data actually looks like. On this occasion, it's an array of objects. Not only that, I am also asking the AI to explain why it's doing each step so that I in turn can understand and not just copy paste the code without gaining any knowledge from it. Okay, so here you can see a live example what's coming back to us from GPT-4. It's given us the correct code, so I have checked that. And I was also giving us an example of how you would use the function, which is something I didn't ask, but is super useful. It's kind of gone above and beyond for helping me out in understanding what is going on. Let's look at another example. We can write, tell me what this essay is about. So I'm going to just type this and then just paste in an essay and hit go. And then chat GPT will do its thing. It's going to give me a summarization as it thinks best. So on this occasion, it is essentially giving me numbered points about what this essay is about. They're really long. I really didn't want to read this much. It's pretty much looking to be the same as the original essay. So this is not something I wanted. I should have been way more specific in telling it what I need. So what I'm going to do is just add to this conversation. So it's going to learn on what I wrote previously. And I'm just going to specify to use bullet points to explain what this essay is about, making sure each point is no longer the 10 words long. So I am being super specific in providing the instructions of what I want. And let's hit go. So now this is a lot shorter. Okay. As you can see, each point is no longer than 10 words long. And then I'm going to get a summary that is a bit longer uh, and will give me a summary of the essay that I pasted in above. So 
Great, of course you can do this on any essay or piece of text that you wish and you can set your own clear and specific instructions as well. Okay, so I hope you can see why the second one is better. It's because I am not assuming the AI knows what kind of format I want the summarization of the essay to be in. I am being specific that I want very short notes on the essay in bullet point format with a short conclusion at the end. If I did not put this, the summary could have been just as long as the essay itself and the prompt could be considered useless in my eyes. Next up, we can also adopt a persona. When writing prompts, it is sometimes helpful to create a persona. This means you are asking the AI to respond to you in a certain character. So exactly like the English language teacher example we saw earlier. Using a persona in prompt engineering can help ensure that the language model's output is relevant, useful and consistent with the needs and preferences of the target audience, making it a powerful tool for developing effective language models that meet the needs of users. Let's look at some examples of adopting a persona. So, for example, you can have this prompt right here. Write a poem for a sister's high school graduation that will be read out to a family and close friends. So, let's go ahead and run this and let's see what comes back. So, there we go. It is quite good. In a room filled with kin and close ties, we gather to honour the mist in our eyes for a journey has ended, another begun, as our dear sister steps into the sun. Okay, so it's coming out with a poem. I can see here it is quite a good one, I guess, probably better than anything that I would have written. Uh, and it is maybe a little bit generic. Maybe that's what you wanted. I think we can do better than this. So let's try this. This time I'm going to write a prompt with a persona. So this time I'm going to specify who I'm writing as. I'm going to do write a poem as Helena. Helena is 25 years old and an amazing writer. Her writing style is similar to famous 21st century poet Rupi Kaur. Writing as Helena, write a poem for her 18 year old sister to celebrate her sister's high school graduation. This will be read out to friends and family at the gathering. Okay, so let's check it out now. We're writing uh, as Helena, she's 25, she's an amazing writer, and we've also assigned a writing style. So let's check it out. Now, ChatGPT should be using anything it knows about Rupi Kaur, hopefully from the internet, in order to apply that style to this poem. Okay, and as you can see, this is maybe a little bit more affectionate. We've said sister, it's obviously a younger sister, so the words little sister are being used. And in general, I think this is a much higher quality poem. And if Helena truly does have the style of Rupi Kaur in writing, it will be almost indistinguishable who wrote this poem, Chat GPT or Helena. So here we go, here is the full thing. It starts off, in the garden of our youth, I watch you bloom, from bud to blossom, from child to woman. 18 summers passed, again, utilizing the fact that we fed it she was 18, and every winter's chill only made you stronger, a force of nature still. So yes, in my eyes, this poem is a lot more better, it's much more refined, it's much more personal, thanks to the prompts that we wrote. We've already had a brief look at specifying format when we limited the word count of our bullet points in a previous example. So that was a great example. Limiting words is one that I use often. However, we can do a bunch of other things. 
including specifying if something is a summary, a list, or a detailed explanation. Heck, you can even create checklists. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do this. Here is an example prompt, and I'm just going to run it. And there we go, we have created a checklist. So many things you can do in ChatGPT. Just make sure to specify the type of format you want and it should be able to do it. Okay, great. Now that we looked at some best practices, let's move on to some more advanced topics in the prompt engineering. In this section, I'm going to talk about two types of prompting we can do. Zero shot prompting and few shot prompting. Zero shot prompting leverages a pre-trained model's understanding of words and concept relationships without further training. And few shot prompting enhances the model with training examples via the prompt, avoiding retraining. So essentially, in the context of the GPT-4 model, we don't really need to do much. We are already using all of the data that it has in order to ask, when is Christmas in America? So let's go ahead and do some zero shot prompting. When is Christmas in America? And hit go. Okay, so it clearly already has the data for this. We don't need to add any examples or anything like that. So, as you can see, zero shot prompting refers to a way of querying models like GPT without any explicit training examples for the task at hand. In the context of machine learning and not just GPT, zero shot typically means that a model performs a task without having seen any examples of that task during its training. Okay, great. So now let's look at few shot prompting. So once again, with zero shot prompting, we gave our language model a prompt and got a response. But sometimes that's just not enough and we need a bit more training. So let's use few shot prompting and level up our language model by showing a few examples of the tasks we want it to perform. So instead of zero examples, we give it a tiny bit of data. So let's think, what would GPT-4 not know? I guess it would not know my favorite types of food. So for example, let's check what is Anya's favorite type of food, plural, okay? And I mean, it can guess, but no, it's just telling me that it doesn't know. So that is absolutely fine, let's stop generating. So now let's feed it in some example data. I'm gonna feed it in a tiny bit of data. Ania's favorite type of food include, sorry about my English, <laughs> let's go with burgers, fries, I love fries, pizza, and hit enter. Okay, so we are essentially giving chat GPT some information. Uh, so now if I type, what restaurant should I take Ania to? in Dubai this weekend and hit here. It should hopefully understand that my favorite types of foods are burgers, fries, and pizza. And given that, find me some restaurants in Dubai that I would like to go to. So here are some, this has been updated as of September, 2021, but you know, these are pretty good ones. So I would totally go to these. This is a great example of few shot prompting in which it wouldn't have been able to answer this question if I hadn't had given it some example data or just trained the model a little bit more in order to get the response that I want. Great.